What's up guys, it's Justin here and Apple's WWDC 2017 keynote just wrapped up a couple hours ago and I installed iOS 11's beta on my iPhone 7 so I want to bring you guys a video. Although the public beta is not available until late June, I'm going to show you how to install it right now. It takes just a few minutes and is so much easier than before. I'll leave the most updated working link in the description but all you have to do is open up the link on your phone and select the iOS 11 beta on your iPhone or iPad. From there you have to allow and install the permissions on your phone and it will restart right away and from there go into the general settings and the software update section and you will see that the iOS 11 developers beta is available for installation. It is the first beta so it may be a bit unreliable so I don't advise you installing it on your main phone and if you do make sure you back it up so you can always go back. But after using it for a few hours I can tell you that it is definitely usable and not as buggy as ones in previous years. If you haven't already, I would also really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and also leave a like on this video as I'll be making some videos of other products that Apple also announced today at WWDC. But let's not waste any more time and just jump into iOS 11. I think generally speaking, this is a pretty minor update and we really weren't expecting much this year aside from some feature changes and some small visual enhancements as well. I think that's definitely what we saw and obviously I can't cover everything featured in iOS 11 because there's a lot of background stuff as well, but I'm going to just run through the major features and things that I notice and think are useful. So to begin, the first thing you're going to notice is that the signal bars have actually changed. Instead of having the five dots that took up quite a bit of space, they've been brought back to the bars. Additionally, the app icons have definitely been cleaned up and the text below the dock is no longer. One of the biggest changes though is control center, which has just been made so much more intuitive and useful in my opinion by having everything laid out in toggles, but also take advantage of long press and 3D touch if that's your phone. Instead of having two separate menus, everything is bunched into one, which is still easy to access and I really like it after just a few hours. Your main toggle is located on the top left corner. You also have your music controls. The brightness and volume sliders have also been cleaned up a bit as well. And with 3D touch, you're able to easily access that and change it. But most importantly, you also have the flexibility of adding widgets and what you think you will use in control center, which in my case, is screen recording and low power mode. From there, they will display as small icons on the bottom, which you can easily toggle at any time. Built-in screen recording is probably one of my favorite features because I often do do demonstrations in my reviews on the phone, so I'm sure a lot of tech reviewers out there are happy that they don't have to plug their phone into a computer and use QuickTime to screen record every time. Right off the bat though, I would say that Control Center is probably one of the biggest and most useful changes that you're going to find once you get used to it. Next up, the notification menu has also seen some changes as well, and this year Apple has tried to integrate the lock screen within it. From sliding down on the top, it will show exactly what it would have displayed on your lock screen and by sliding upwards, it will show your notifications from before. This is overall just more streamlined because I know a lot of people were complaining about the way that the notifications were sorted in iOS 10. Sliding to the left though, everything stays the same for the most part. As someone who takes a lot of screenshots for collaborative work, I often find myself typing an annotated message to describe what I just screenshotted and sent. With iOS 11, as soon as you take a screenshot, it puts it to the bottom left corner. You're able to mark it up right away and not have to go into the Photos app and the markup to make your edits and share. This is definitely something I'm going to be using a lot. Another feature that will come in really handy for people with small hands or if you're an iPhone plus sized owner is the option for one-handed typing. To do this on your keyboard, all you have to do is go into your keyboard changer and on the bottom you'll find three different options to have it on the right, left, or middle. It then shifts and condenses the keyboard for one side to make it easier to reach all of the keys and like I mentioned before, this is going to be especially useful in my case on my iPhone 7 Plus because I don't really have a problem reaching both sides of the keyboard on my 7. Going into messages, you're going to notice that there are some bold letters on the top of each Apple pre-installed app that just tells you what the app is. But jumping into an actual feed, Apple has added some features once again that just enhances your experience in messaging other Apple users. I personally never used any of the effects or features in iOS 10, so this isn't that important to me, but there are a few things that I think I will use. What you will notice though is there is app stickers. So this allows you to use compatible apps and just share useful information between like Google Maps, Shazam, StubHub, Dropbox. And what I would use the most is probably Evernote. In this example, I'm able to easily share a link to a note, which I would normally have to go into the Evernote app and grab the link and then copy and paste into messages. I'm not gonna go into full detail, but I think this is a useful feature, especially for someone who is more productivity based with their phone as opposed to just some visual stickers. 
One of the game changers that Apple may have announced today though is the ability to send payments through iMessage. It's done through Apple Pay and definitely looks like a cool feature, which in a lot of ways is reminiscent of Venmo, which is not available in Canada. So I haven't been able to use it, but I have heard some pretty good things and this payment method looks pretty cool despite not being an Apple Wallet user myself. iCloud Sync Messages is great, especially if you own a lot of Apple devices, and that will just ensure that everything is synced and continuous throughout all of your devices, for example, when you delete something in a certain feed. Apple has also focused some time today with distracted driving, with a feature that senses when you're in a car and start driving, in which it will disable notifications, which is something that I should definitely start using because I'm someone who likes to text while I'm at the stoplight. When it receives an incoming text while you're driving, it can also send a text that lets them know that you're driving, and also give them the option to send the text through if it's urgent. Moving on to Siri, it is able to once again better learn your experience based on your usage, and Apple has once again introduced some new languages, for example, and also some translation functions within as well. Developers can now also integrate their apps to use with Siri, and you can also type Siri to ask questions. I'm personally not a Siri user because I want to say battery on my phone, but I think some of these features are great and people are going to enjoy it, especially if Siri is something that you use on a regular basis. The camera is also another section that saw some improvement as well, both on the back end and also on the visual and functionality side. They introduced a new processing system called HEVC for video, which is high efficiency video coding, and also a new photo format HEIF for high efficiency image format, which purpose is to replace JPEG. Both the pictures and videos will take up two times less space with no loss in quality. And some other enhancements are in the live photo functionality, which gives you more flexibility now to select a certain frame as the main photo. And for example, bounce is pretty much like boomerang on Instagram, which is something that I use all the time if you follow me on Instagram. I also want to take some time to touch on the notes app because that's personally my favorite notes app of choice because it syncs between all of my devices and computers. They've not only added some great ways to add some new elements, but within this, you're also able to scan documents now straight into the notes app. And this is great for business purposes or for school notes when you just want to get a copy of your notes because you probably lost them, which is something that I did all the time. And at this point, essentially replaces apps that I used to use for scanning, including Evernote scanner and Adobe scanner. And last but not least, the App Store has also seen a redesign, which just feels more streamlined, simplified, and everything is just better spaced out and effectively used. I used to feel like the App Store was a bit too busy as everything was just all over the place, but now it just seems better sorted and more user friendly. That seems to be the overall theme throughout iOS 11 with everything just being more in your face and user simplified while having some backend improvements, but also some integration of features that you love that you might've needed another app for, but is now integrated within. My personal favorite features include the changes to Control Center, the screen recording directly from your phone and not having to use a computer. I also really like the scanner function and just the way that Apple has taken the integration of the Apple ecosystem with computers, tablets, and phones to another level and just trying to fill up the patches that it might have had before. But otherwise, I would love to know your favorite feature of iOS 11, so go ahead and drop a comment down below and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But this has just been a hands-on overview of the iOS 11 beta. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next video.